Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. Straight out of Africa with my bunny friends. I am Y311H and it's a pleasure to have you joining us today. Let me put you up to speed with what we do here. My friend, we react to videos, extremely interesting videos, good vibes videos with the intentions of spreading love, peace, honesty, and forgiveness to the whole world. Now, if you have already understood that, there is something else. My friend, you normally read from some good vibes book, book of knowledge. Some good vibes people, English people, called it the Bible. But recently, on some previous episode, which you can check out after this one, we came across another new book, another good vibes book of knowledge. And today, we shall be reading from that one also. It's called the Quran. Uh, it's good vibes, you see? It's also full of guidance. Myself, I don't know much about this book, to be honest. I tried reading it and... Uh, I just don't know how to tell you, my friends. You see, I expected it's uh, divided in another way. But anyway, let's hear what it says. Now, this one is from Abraham. Abraham 7. Are you together? Please, uh, you can explain to people if you understand. And remember, you are not caused to be declared publicly. If you are grateful, I will add more favors unto you. But if you show ingratitude, truly, my punishment is terrible indeed. Hey, that is from Abraham 7. Myself is also the first time I've read it, you see? Anyways, good vibes one. Let's give thanks to our creator for this day and this far. Dear Lord Father, thank you for your soul, Father, that have joined us today, Father. Thank you for your breath in them and us, Father. All glory and honor belong unto you. Dear Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for unity and peace, Father. Forgive us all our sins and guide us through reacting to these videos, Father. Help us to spread love and fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Let's dive in. Good vibes all the way. Ha! Look at this stone. Oh! Invisible on the mirror is crazy stuff, but not as crazy or as mysterious as this thing that was seen on the ocean there. Oh my god! There's always mysterious stuff in the waters as you have seen from different episodes. And now this... What? How? Look at this one. What could this be? Um... Uh, I know, I know, guys. The Earth is a globe and the Moon is a solid rock in outer space, which is over 238,000 miles away from us. But you know what's really crazy? We can take a Nikon P900, which has an 87x zoom, and zoom all the way in to crazy things that are super far away, such as Mars being 140 million miles away from Earth. We can zoom in on that. Not to mention that Mars looks like it's glowing and oscillating. It doesn't look like a solid rock in outer space. And what about Saturn, which is 804 million miles away from Earth? Look how shiny and glowy it is. I thought it was some giant, weird, gaseous giant. It's hydrogen and helium mainly, and it's so light that it could float on water. So you're telling me that a Nikon P900, which I'm sorry, it has 83x zoom, not 87x zoom. You're telling me that that can zoom all the way in on Saturn? And can you tell me how Saturn appears to be reflecting so much light? It's reflecting the sun's light, right? That's what's happening? Not to mention that NASA said there's a giant hexagon at the top of Saturn's North Pole. Give me a break. Now this is a Nikon P1000 and we're gonna do a little trick here. We're gonna zoom in on this sun and see if it looks like there's a bunch of solar flares and combusting and nuclear fusion going on. I don't really see any solar flares. In fact, it just looks like a big light in the sky. And it looks a lot closer than 93 million miles away. 
But you know, I have no idea what I'm talking about, and I am just a conspiracy theorist that makes these videos for absolute entertainment. This is one of the craziest space images I've ever seen. This is a real image of space. This is a section of the expanding remains of a really massive star that exploded about 8,000 years ago, and that explosion would have made it brighter in the sky than Venus, despite it being 2,400 light years away. And the entire Veil Nebula is 110 light years across, which means if we could see it with our eyes, this is what it would look like in the night sky compared to the moon. It's huge. But for that cool image, you have to zoom in right there. This crazy tendril becomes this. And this image is two light years across, so it's still huge. What you're looking at is literally a blast wave through space. It's a collision of the blast wave and dust and gas. It's the leftovers of an exploded star. Look at these, like, filaments. The fastest of this is moving at one million miles per hour. And if you don't, don't believe this is real, you can actually buy a telescope and with the correct filters, you can take a photo of this in your backyard. It's day 27 of sailing across the Pacific Ocean alone, and I got company. I am in the largest storm I've been in on passage, and I think that these are porpoises. Um, they are something in between a dolphin and a killer whale, or there's some type of whale. I have no idea, but there's so many of them. Oh my god, incredible! No way! <laughs> After being alone for nearly a month, it, it's really good to have some company. <laughs> A lot of people ask him why we don't use real glass in movies and TV. Well, in most cases we do. If it needs to hit somebody and not break, or crash out of frame, we'll use silicone rubber glass or plastic. And we'll save a lot of money that way. We'll use plastic and rubber, but if we have to see it break, we'll use breakaway resin. Then we hand it over to the sound designers and foley artists who make this sound like this. I think it was a smashing success. I crushed it. Sorry if I shattered the illusion. Drinking alcohol of any sort dehydrates you. Take a sip of water in between and fill yourself with some food that will reduce the absorption level. Remember, know your limits and do not go beyond that. Oh, 25 degrees is a bit hot for this young chap out here, you see? But guess what? Lucky them, there is some good vibes human here that came across for them and decided to give them some time for a drink and some water even to cool themselves. Oh, this is good vibes, you see? This is a wonderful good vibe so that understands the importance of caring and love. This is what we are always talking about here, my friends. Look at this. This bird definitely felt nice. Oh, we decided to play with some toy there. Never seen temperatures in the state of Georgia. We're in West Georgia. I'm 42 years old. Look at what this sun doing to these tomatoes it's absolutely burning the skin on them look at that this is the side that's always facing the sun same thing over here This is very abnormal. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm not 
maybe I'm not old enough to have experienced it yet. I've just never seen, never seen tomatoes grow this way. Well, have the sun affect them this way. Look at this. Just, just burnt. Paul Dirac, the author of The Principles of Quantum Mechanics, wrote, pick a flower on Earth and you move the farthest star. Comment what you think he means. The unexpected. Oh my God. How is retaining doing this? Retaining coming from the ground or what's up? This is insane. Oh my God. So some people think that they're too clever to be conditioned. You know, being conditioned is just for the weak of mind. But look at this for a second. What do you see? Is anything jumping out to you or is it just a series of random blobs? I'm going to show you what it is in a minute. So don't look at the comments just yet. Just take note of what you think you see. Okay, so if you weren't sure what this picture is, hopefully now you've got a clearer idea. It's a cow! Some people will have seen the cow straight away. Whenever I run this exercise in person, usually like one or two in 30 can see the cow. But most people can't until they see the red line. Now I'm going to show you the original picture again. Can you still see the cow? The answer is probably yes. These pictures are from a book called Everyday Bias by Howard J. Ross, and they demonstrate how fast our mind works. Because now that you can see the cow, you can't decide not to see the cow. You can't force your brain to go backwards. Now that that information is stored in your unconscious, you have no control over the fact that your brain is projecting that knowledge onto this image. You do not choose how your brain takes in and processes information. You are not in control of your cognition. Believing that you are too smart to be conditioned is incredibly dangerous. The fact is your brain is taking in and processing information at a rate that you can't even comprehend. There is no person on this planet who doesn't have unconscious bias. It's part of how our brain works. There's no binary of people who have been conditioned and people who have not. There's just different ways that people have been conditioned. And there's people who have been exposed to things that allow them to change some of that conditioning. If you put different information into your brain, then your conditioning changes. Being intelligent doesn't change this process. Honestly, a lot of the time it just makes you more likely to double down on your biases. <laughs> Taking a curious and creative approach to life is something that will expose you to a wider variety of information for your brain to process. And that's where innovation happens. Not because you're too smart to be conditioned, but you are curious enough to work with your brain and give it new avenues to explore. Oh my God, what am I seeing? Have y'all had your phone up to your ear like this today? Or even right now, you could have it right up in your face. This is extremely dangerous and I'm about to show you why. Many right now aren't taking it seriously, but you will when I'm done. Lately, I've been seeing tons of videos of young people getting brain tumors and having the big C word. So watch this, then we'll talk. Measuring, so we're at 0 0.2, 0 0.6. It jumped up because it's actually picking up signal. Now watch it when it comes closer. 28, 33, 29, 39, as opposed to the distance you would be on speakerphone. 0.1, it don't even go down below that. Even now you're trying to talk yourself into thinking that's just a little bit. Well, check this out. After 15 minutes of phone usage, look at this dude's head. But specifically look right here at the forehead. You're about to see why I said that. That is your frontal lobe. This is only 95 to 2014, so you can't even imagine what it is now. But look at this red line. What is that huge red line? Frontal lobe tumors. Like this. Again, with cell phone, frontal lobe, without cell phone. And how bad the microwave waves affect our brain. I'm telling you it's worth it to keep a safe distance from your phone all the time, watching on the phone, and even to turn off your Wi-Fi when you're going to bed, because 
This is the survival rate of 100 people over 5 years, and just about all of them are gone within 5 years. 18 to 40, the gray line right here, you might have another year or two. So basically, when you get this, you're looking at 5 years left. And here's another chart showing the frontal lobe tumors and the big C word exploding over the last couple decades. And then again, this is 2014, 2015. You can't even imagine if it was 2024 where every child and human and everyone has a phone. Not including the new technologies that came out either. We need to spread awareness because I'm telling you guys, this is not worth it. For the last few years, now, I've always had my phone on speakerphone away from my face because when it's on my face, I start feeling really, really, really zoned out. Go figure. And to think that this was an anti-electricity cartoon in the 1900s. We all know someone who's always on that phone. Call them out. Tell them put that thing down. Hey, want to learn about systems thinking with me? I am currently reading this book, Thinking in Systems by Danella H. Meadows. And you should go and read it. But while I've got you, I'm going to share some fun stuff that I've come across in this book already. If a frog turns left and catches a fly, and then it turns right and it catches a fly, and then it turns backwards and it catches a fly, we can presume that this frog's purpose is nothing to do with turning left or right or backwards, but to do with catching flies. If a government states that its purpose is to, oh, I don't know, pulling an example out of thin air, um, save the NHS, and then it actually allocates very little time, money, resources or effort towards that goal, then we can deduce that that is not the government's purpose. Purpose is deduced and defined by behaviour, not by rhetoric or stated goals. The purpose of a thermostat system is to maintain a building at a steady temperature. One of the purposes of a plant is to bear seeds and therefore produce more plants. The purpose of a national economy, judging based on its behaviour, is to keep growing larger. In almost every system, an important function of that system is its own perpetuation, its own continuation, its own survival. Now, when we talk about changing systems, often we talk about changing elements of that system. But even if you change every player on a football team, it's still recognisably a football team. Now, they may play significantly better or worse, but you're still playing football. Your body replaces its cells all the time, but it's still recognisably your body. So what are some more drastic ways that we can change systems? Well, one of those ways would be changing the interconnections, the relationships. Say we change the rules of the game. We change it from the rules of football to the rules of basketball. Even though you've technically not changed any of the players, you're playing a whole new ball game. If we take a tree, for example, and we change the interconnections there, an example of that would be changing carbon dioxide into oxygen. Say we change that into oxygen into carbon dioxide. Suddenly you've not got a tree anymore. You've got an animal. How about this time instead of changing elements or relationships, we change the purpose. You keep the players of the football game, you keep the rules, but the purpose changes from winning to losing. We change the purpose of the tree from surviving and reproducing to sucking up all the nutrients in the soil and growing to an unlimited size. A change in purpose is one of the most profound ways that you can change a system. I wonder what else this could be applied to. In 1996, a physicist pulled a prank to test the standards of academic publishing in the humanities. Alan Sokal submitted a nonsensical paper filled with postmodernist jargon to Social Text, a leading North American cultural studies journal. It was titled Transgressing the Boundaries Towards a Transformative Hermeneutics of Quantum Gravity. Here's a sentence from it. Physical reality, no less than social reality, is at bottom a social and linguistic construct. The paper was accepted and published. Sokal then revealed it was all a hoax, which triggered a great deal of discussion about the standards of academic publishing. Sokal claimed that the editors published his article because he was an academic authority, despite it being nonsense. It also served as a critique of what he called sloppy sociology. This prank is now known as the SoCal Affair, and you can read the whole joke paper online. Answer this question for me. If I ask you what's the opposite of water, what is going to be your answer? Are you going to say fire, like a sane person, or are you going to say ice? 
The opposite of water could be mini compounds. Definitely not ice because that is water. But I'm going to pick one, let's say sodium chloride. Water is a covalently bonded molecule comprised of hydrogen and oxygen, while sodium chloride is an ionic compound comprised of sodium cations and chloride anions. Water, of course, is a liquid at room temperature. Sodium chloride is a solid. Water is known as a universal solvent, whereas sodium chloride best behaves as a solute and is highly soluble in water. Just think of the ocean. Now it's your turn. Can you think of any other compounds that are opposite of water? The dark side of housekeeping that nobody talks about, the paranormal activity, especially when you're working graveyard. I don't know if you guys know of Luxor Hotel. It's like this big black pyramid in Las Vegas. That's where I was my first job housekeeping. There's this weird background story of these construction workers that fell as they were building it. So I'm doing a room, I'm on the, I believe the 13th floor. That was a red flag right there. The number 13 is just infamous for being all kind of bad. I'm on the 13th floor and I'm doing my rooms and I'm, this is around like New Year's Eve. So it's packed, packed, but everybody's like, <laughs> it's Vegas. So it's nighttime, nightlife, everybody is doing their thing. Nobody's really in the rooms. Everybody's out and about, you know, just doing the Vegas thing. It's so quiet during graveyard. It's so fucking quiet. You can hear yourself breathing sometimes. Like if you can't hear the music or anything, you can hear yourself breathing. And I get chills when I still think about this. I hear this voice say, excuse me, ma'am. And I'm in the bathroom. So like the bathrooms are fairly close to the door. So I, we, when you're cleaning the rooms, you have your car parked in front of the door. So I come from the bathroom thinking that that person's right there because that's how close it sounds to me, thinking that they're right there by my cart. I go out to the cart, baby, there's nobody fucking there. There's nobody fucking there. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, maybe they were just like, it was just like a high buy kind of thing. I, I don't know, maybe they were drinking just, saw me like excuse me ma'am so i go back to cleaning and i'm cleaning out the sink this time but i hear it again excuse me ma'am you know like more of like a excuse me ma'am like 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 trying to get past me or something i hear it again i look and this fucking cold like right in front of me right in front of me so i'm like oh no this ain't that bro i didn't see too much or too much in life like i'm not about to go out like this I closed that door so quick, I got the fuck out of that room. I closed it, went on to the next room. Leave it for the next, like, I'm done with this. I already was getting, like, a creepy, weird-ass vibe. Just And if you know, there are a lot of stories that people, they see, like, silhouettes, black silhouettes. Sometimes people will see people running at them that aren't there. You'll hear things, things will move. That is just the very first instance. You guys like and comment if you want to hear more. Something's going down right now with... The earthquakes. Hold on. Three point for Chicago. Multiple three pointers, Oklahoma. Hold on to your asses. The fuck is that? The fuck is that in the woods? Hello? Hello? In my mom's closet, we heard a hollow spot in the floor. So we ripped up the carpet. 
and found an orange door. Which led to a safe in the ground. Now all we have to do is figure out a code. A lot of people really don't like religion, and one of the reasons commonly given is because religion is seen as being irrational. It's beyond science, beyond logic, or even beyond argument. But in his essay, The Will to Believe, William James argues that we ought to, at times, simply commit to certain beliefs, even if there's a possibility we might be wrong. For James, the problem in waiting for definite proof for our beliefs is that we will never commit to the many important things in life. We'll never commit to a relationship, to morality, to religion or any creative venture at all. So in the absence of proof, James argues that we must turn to our passional natures and religious beliefs are of this kind. James argues that there are three rules governing these kind of commitments. The first is that it must be live, in that the belief must be a vaguely realistic possibility for me. Christianity or Islam are live options for me, but Baphomet or Baal are not. Second, the belief must be forced, in that you can't avoid making a decision either way. If I say, love or hate me, you can say, no, I just kind of like you. But with religion, the decision is forced. You believe or you don't. For James, agnosticism is functionally identical to atheism. And the third thing is it must be momentous, which means it must be unique, significant and of huge importance. God, immortality and eternal damnation definitely tick this box. James argues that sometimes we have to take the first step towards the unknown. James wrote that sometimes with things like religion, we have to act for the best, hope for the best and take what comes. So, Ferenza Cat, now listen to this, particularly if you are vertically deficient. In order to avoid dangling legs and looking like a little child, do what the late Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mother used to do, and sit on the edge of the sofa. You can put lots of cushions behind your back if needs be for a bit of support, but it gives you a much more elegant look than falling back into the puffy sofa. Y'all have got to see this. So when I first discovered this thing in the sun and recorded it and put it on TikTok, I had just started, so I only had like 10,000 followers. So now since the page is much bigger, I'm hoping I can get it out to more people. So not only do I have pictures of this, I have video evidence that I took myself with my phone um, into this whole thing. And basically I'm about to show you, in the sun, in the sun there is this crescent and this crescent shape you can see the energy running through this crescent and this crescent is literally running the sun for years now people have been like the sun looks different the sun looks different it is different back when we were kids the sun was literally yellow but now it's like a strong white light there's a reason for it it's completely different so i mean like there's no telling who did it or what it is but check it out this is the sun don't believe me? Watch this. The sun is literally like an LED now. I have no idea. What do y'all think of this? Tell me in the comments. And we aren't even touching on Nibiru right now. That'll be a later video, but yes, Nibiru is right behind the sun. The sun. <laughs> 